You know, nowadays journalism, they don't, um, it, it, you don't earn a lot of money in journalism. The perks are incredible. I travel, I go uh, see places, I get free stuff. But um, my whole aspect in life is helping people. And journalism has a power. It has that effect, it has that life. And through journalism, I can help people. I'll give you an example. I uh, had the story of a youngster who, um, with disabilities, that he bought air parts from a certain company. I won't mention the name of that company. And uh, the air parts, the silicon got stuck in his ear and he um, received an infection from that. He turned to the company, they uh, didn't even listen to him, and so he turned to me. Now, that is an incredible story. That is a story that could have made the headlines. But I um, turned to the company, the company gave him enough compensation that I felt that it didn't warrant to write article against that company. Because, in my eyes, journalism isn't to make bad about uh, different things. It's to use that power of the press to change things. I was in Malta in a conference, and on the way back, I was sitting next to um, a guy from Germany. And he told me he does PR in Germany. And when he heard what I do, he said, well, I do PR for a hospital in Germany that that hospital in the middle of nowhere in Germany, it's known as the best orthopedic hospital in Germany. And they've opened the kosher kitchen and a synagogue with a Taurus uh, inside that uh, hospital. I said, wow, that's fascinating. There's nowhere in Europe where they have a kosher kitchen and here in the middle of Germany and all places. I flew over to Germany and I sat with the CEO of the hospital and I asked him, why did they open the kosher kitchen? And his answer blew me away. He said to me, I opened it because my grandfather was a Nazi. And not only was a Nazi, he was the top ranking Nazi that it was photographed occupying Poland. And because of that, he decided to open a kosher kitchen, but he not only to open the kosher kitchen, the mashkir told me that he could have taken any uh, cheaper sechsha, but he, he wanted to do something extra special, and the, he went on the strictest uh, laws. He said that if he's not there, the mashkir's not there, the door's locked, and only the mashkir has the key. And that made me think on if a non-Jew could do that just because of the history of his family, on us as people, and what we must do to go over and beyond because of our history, because of our heritage. So I covered diaspora in Mariv. And uh, I was told by a colleague of mine, Shlomo Elisha, who's supposed to be here. He, um, uh, he keeps on telling me he's on the way of this uh, event. And I uh, felt that as someone who the reporting of, Jew of Judaism, the reporting of diaspora is ingrained in me, that I felt that it was important for me to come here and see uh, the corporations I can make, the corporations I can give, um, um, whatever I can. I, I, I can be on vacation anywhere and I would go and do meetings for um, journalism. Because the life of a, of a journalist never stops. The life of diaspora and journalism never stops. It's that connection between Israel and diaspora is very, very important. 
as I said, to, uh, I was speaking to a couple of months ago to my very dear friend Yitzhak Kertzog, the President of Israel. And um, he said, I know you moved back to the UK because uh, you got married and um, your wife needs. But I ask you one favor, keep on pushing that between the diaspora and, uh, and Israel, Israel. Keep on working for Israel from the diaspora. And that's why it was important for me to go, because to keep on working for the diaspora for Israel, to show that Israel cares about the diaspora and we care about the diaspora as, as well. And I know that diaspora cares about Israel as well.